I love the mentality. Okay. This is the type of mentality that allows you to go from Murray State to the All-Star game. So I'm with Ja on that. And as you said, he was very complimentary of Jordan. He wasn't, he wasn't dissing Mike. But no. No oh. way, no how would Ja Morant have cooked Michael Jordan. Now, nah. could Ja have scored on Jordan? Sure. Could Ja maybe have crossed up Jordan like Allen Iverson famously did? Sure. But getting the best, who would have got the best of who? Obviously, Jordan would have got the best of Ja for several reasons. One, he's 6'6". All right, Ja is 6'3". So he's got a a serious height advantage. And to go along with that height advantage, he's just as athletic as Ja, if not more athletic. Ja had a 44-inch vertical leap. Jordan had, Ja had a 44-inch vertical leap, Nick. I know you didn't see Jordan play. You were a little baby at that time. But Jordan (laughs) has, according to Bleacher Report, tied for the highest vertical leap in NBA history, 48 inches. All right, so the athleticism, there's no no advantage for Ja in terms of athleticism. Thirdly, Ja is not a great defender, not even really a good defender at this point. Jordan was an awesome defender. Even the noted Jordan hater, Nick Wright, has him as top 20-ish defender of all time. Yeah, of course. So while Ja could not have no chance of stopping Jordan, Jordan would have stopped Ja certainly a lot more than Ja would stop Jordan. And then finally, Ja alluded to it, the competitiveness. Jordan's competitiveness is a legendary in everything from ping pong to pool yeah. to obviously yeah. NBA to basketball. Cards, ja yeah. has yet to, yeah, you run it right. Do whatever you got to yeah. do to win. Yeah. We re, it remains to, to be seen. Yeah. Does Ja have that? So we'll have to okay. see. But yeah, no way. And Nick, okay. please uh-huh. do not lose your basketball credibility by saying Ja Morant, yeah. as much as I love him, would have cooked MJ. Please don't. Okay, do well, listen, I. There's, I was going to try to do this softly and kindly, but Brew took a bit of a, you know, a generational shot at me with the idea that I was unable right. to watch Michael Jordan, saying, oh, I was in diapers. How old yeah, were but you? the internet exists. Now, no, well, the internet exists, and you know the, you know, the research that I've done for this NBA project I'm doing, which, by the way, number five, Tim Duncan, number four, Magic Johnson came out on Sunday. Our top three come out in the coming weeks. So I've done even a further deep dive because even though you call me a Jordan hater, he is firmly inside that top three of the last 50 years. In fact, I'll oh, say the wow. top three oh, really? of okay. the all time. And there are parts of Michael <laughs> Jordan that I actually think, Brew, have been underrated by the general public because we, we people stick to certain iconic moments, the shot we showed over Yellow, the shot over Byron Russell, the dunk contest, and some of the some of his greatest seasons on both ends of the court were before the Bulls won anything. He had a 33-8-8 eight eight right. year. He had the 37-6-5 and five year, and that was before the Bulls were winning. So I actually think the Jordan story gets told wrongly on both sides, right? And as far as the vertical leap thing, as much as I respect the intrepid journalist at Bleacher Report, back I, I think in Jordan's era, they had to measure the vertical leap with rulers and the eye test. So I'm going to go ahead and okay. say I, I'm a little <laughs> skeptical that Michael Jordan has the highest vertical leap of anyone in Come NBA on. history. A little skeptical. I'm going to say I'm, I'm guessing Vince Carter can jump higher than Michael Jordan. I'm just guessing no, 43, that Vince Carter 43, can jump higher. 43. Yeah, okay. Well, then guess what? Then I guess Jordan Vince must have been 42 and a half because I watched them both. <laughs> and Jordan, again, again, the fact that we're going to the Bleacher Report know, has YouTube. written once. Bleacher Report wrote I, once. That, that it, Okay, in, great. In Bleacher, Bleacher Report, Report respected? Well, they were t- they were negative twenty five years old when that vertical leap would have been taken. So they must have aggregated that from somewhere. My guess is some old crusty newspaper reporter was like, "I was there. It was four feet off the ground." Name Chris They're like Broussard. four feet, four, 48 <laughs> inches. Sounds right to me. But here's the thing, Wilds. The answer to this is the don't is call obvious. me crusty either. Both guys would have cooked each other. Now, if the question is one on one to eleven, who wins? Of course I'm saying Michael Jordan would win the overall game. Okay. Nobody's arguing otherwise. But if the, if the question is, would Ja have gotten his, 
would Ja have been able to do not just what Allen Iverson did, but what Kevin Johnson did and break Michael Jordan's ankles a couple times, leave him fall, laying on the ground saying, Pippen and Rodman, that's what we brought you here for. Well, Rodman went on the team. Okay. Yet. Uh, that, well, no. Well, I mean, again, everyone remembers the AI clip. Do they remember the Kevin Johnson clip? Do they remember the Kobe Bryant clip? Do they remember the, and Brew, you'll like this. Oh, the great Rod Strickland. Google Rod Strickland, Michael Jordan, throw it in the old YouTube. Get a nice three minute compilation of Ra hot Rod Strickland cooking him up. So yeah, I do think Ja Morant would cook him. And I think Jordan would cook Ja. And I think it would be an entertaining match. But only Jordan acolytes and sycophants would act like Ja wouldn't get his wilds. Can I, can I defend the Iverson clip real quick? It was on officially March 3rd, 1997. Michael Jordan was 34 years old, the same age as Mike Conley. So if Mike Conley got cooked right now, we wouldn't be like, ah, prime <laughs> Mike Conley. Joe Ingles is 34. If you cook up Joe Ingles, you know, prime Joe Ingles, 34-year-old Michael Jordan. This is viewed as MJ's prime when he's far past his athletic prime. And Broussard, I think there's a little bit of Michael Jordan uh, misremembering. How about that? Because of the last dance. There should be a new project called The First Few Dances because The Last yes. Dance focused so much, and Ja mentioned it on his, like, mindset, that it's almost we've gotten to a strange, strange point where MJ's early athleticism and the great reporting of Bleacher Report is being called into question, <laughs> where all of a sudden, Give because Ja a can dunk on some people, <laughs> it's true. Early athletic Michael Jordan now is being forgotten, and we're like, oh, of course, Ja, he's so fast. He would cook up Michael Jordan. It, Michael Jordan's right, now being underrated, right. Broussard. No. That's my take. Underrated Michael Jordan. Outstanding, outstanding True. point, Wiles. And Nick just did it. And again, I get it. He was in diapers when Jordan was really at his athletic no. peak. Yeah, having blowouts. Okay. But you you were close. Uh, you, you're a young guy. Okay. Um, but... Jordan came into the league. I mean, the athleticism is what got people. And, and, of and course. The, I don't say, you know, what, is, what is the phrase Wild use? Miss me. Miss me with the O. Oh, they weren't athletic back then. Hadn't we seen Dr. Uh, J? Playing against plumbers. Ha ha hadn't we, hadn't, didn't we have Dominique Wilkins, Clyde of Drexler? Course. I mean, there were plenty of superstar athletes, like athletes, quickness, yes. leaping ability, and all that at that time. And Jordan's was head and shoulders above most. All right. And the thing Rick that Smith. made him the GOAT, even, I'll give it to Nick if you want to argue GOAT conversation, whatever. The thing that made him that was the unique combination of otherworldly athleticism combined with understanding the fundamentals of the game, 100%. which he learned in North Carolina from Dean Smith, playing team basketball. So all of that said, but I agree, Nick. Ultimately, we agree. Josh certainly would have got his. But of course. he would have lost, obviously, I, to Jordan. But, yeah, he could have got some moves and scored, yeah. Again, I'm not a count the rings guy, and I know you aren't exclusively either, Brew. The point I the, the point I was trying to make in the beginning about the Jordan thing is I think there is a strong argument to be made that Jordan's singular best season – came when he didn't win a championship. The, and it wasn't even the year he won Defensive Player of the Year and MVP. It was the year after that, when Michael Jordan put it all together and they lost to the Pistons in the conference finals in the Scottie Pippen 1-for-10 game. The, you know, like you could argue that was the peak of Jordan's powers. And that was a time where Jordan was the best athlete in the league. So I, I, I buy all of that. Do I buy that Bleacher Report uncovered an old newspaper article where somebody eyeballed his vertical leap and it's five inches better than Vince Carter's? What you're telling me is Michael Jordan had a five. Vince Carter, you said, is 43. That was measured I'm officially. I'm just reporting that Michael, what was reported. No. No, but again, Nick, the Bleacher Report Nick, didn't report that. They did. Hold on. You're acting like Jordan played in the Stone Age. They were able to record verticals at that time. Stop okay. it. With, oh, well, they, then, they, they didn't record they verticals. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First. Or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.